Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna Snap Me and today we're getting started with the posterior abdominal wall. To all those who haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I request you all to click that subscribe button as I make anatomy a piece of cake and today I'm going to make aorta quite simple for you. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. The abdominal aorta, basically we all know that aorta comes from the heart directly from your left ventricle carrying oxygenated blood for the entire body, right? First, it is the descending thoracic aorta, which means it lies in the thorax, after which it enters the abdomen via the diaphragmatic opening, the aortic opening. There in the abdomen, it is known as the abdominal aorta. And that is our today's topic, the origin, course, termination and branches of the abdominal aorta and a clinical here and there I'm going to discuss about the aorta. All right. So the uh, origin of abdominal specifically is at the T12 vertebral level. All right. So one important thing about the aorta I want you to remember in general is that it will uh, traverse the L1, L2, L3, L4 vertebras. All right. This is how long it is. Uh, up to the L4 vertebra, it will terminate. And apart from that, it will be lying to the left side of the IVC. See, this is the left and this is the right. And IVC will lie towards its right. Abdominal aorta begins at the T12 level where it enters your abdomen uh, from the aortic opening. And then it lies to the left of the median plane. Remember that. Uh, and then it runs and along these L1, 2, 3, 4 vertebra. And it eventually terminates at the L4 vertebra by dividing into two its bifurcation branches. The bifurcation of the aorta uh, divides the aorta into two, two common iliac arteries. The right common iliac and the left common iliac, which we'll discuss eventually. It's a very large vessel of your body. And you can even say it's the main vessel of your body because it has to supply blood to the entire body. So all the branches that come from the aorta are eventually going to go and distribute along in the entire body. So let's talk about relations of the aorta. Where does it lie exactly? Remember one thing we're talking about the posterior abdominal wall in the first place. That means the aorta is obviously lying in stuck to the posterior abdominal wall. Anterior to the aorta will lie the visceras that are the pancreas and the stomach and even the duodenum's third part. We've already discussed in the relations of the third part of the duodenum that it lies behind it, right? And uh, posterior to the aorta lie all these vertebras, the L1 to L4 vertebras. To the right of the aorta lies the right crest of the diaphragm, the inferior vena cava, cisterna chylae as well. And to the left of the aorta will lie your left crest of the diaphragm and you can see a little bit of the body of the pancreas is also lying here. So now that you understand exactly the location of where the abdominal aorta is kept, let's talk about its branches. The branches of aorta I've made quite simple with my mnemonics. Uh, basically, your aorta gives ventral branches, it gives lateral branches, and it gives the dorsal branches. That means ventral branches arise from its front, lateral branches arise from its uh, lateral side, and dorsal from the posterior side, right? I hope you all remember something interesting here. We have discussed the ventral branches uh, in the video where I discussed the gut blood supply. The ventral branches of the abdominal aorta are known as the visceral branches of the aorta these are unpaired branches and their mnemonic goes like cis all right c for the celiac trunk s for the superior mesenteric artery and i for the inferior mesenteric artery we all remember that the celiac trunk was arising somewhere over here and then came the superior mesenteric artery arising here and then the inferior mesenteric artery was arising right uh, these are the ventral branches they are the unpaired visceral branches which means they are not in pairs and they supply the viscera major your gut derives its blood supply from these branches right so i guess we don't need to discuss that in this video the lateral and the dorsal branches is what we actually need to discuss the lateral branches mnemonic goes like grim starting from above downwards these are the i for the inferior phrenic artery phrenic means diaphragm so they have to do something with the diaphragm middle suprarenal arteries then we have the renal arteries. Finally, we have the gonadal arteries. They can be testicular in case of males and they are ovarian in case of females, right? Let's discuss these um, arteries in a while. Let's talk about the dorsal branches before that. The mnemonic for the dorsal branches are four lumps. Why four lumps? Four LU. These are the lumbar arteries, which are in four pairs. And then we have the median MS, the median sacral artery. So let's go ahead and discuss these branches in depth now, all right? Let's talk about the inferior phrenic artery first. Now, the inferior phrenic artery, it arises just above the celiac trunk and it goes towards the right and the left side, obviously. Uh, and these two arteries go to their corresponding crust of the diaphragm and just medial to the suprarenal gland. We all know the kidneys are lying over here. 
and the suprarenal glands lie above the kidneys. So just medial to uh, these suprarenal glands, the uh, inferior phrenic arteries enter the diaphragm and they basically supply it. Uh, remember one thing, these inferior phrenic artery, an important point of them is that they give what you call the superior suprarenal arteries. I've heard that word somewhere, right? It was middle suprarenal. So there was a superior suprarenal, which was derived from these inferior phrenic arteries. All right, moving on to the middle suprarenal arteries. The middle suprarenal arteries arise uh, at the level of the region of the superior mesenteric arteries. These come laterally, they're uh, small branches. These two arise and then they go towards your suprarenal glands over the kidney and they supply the corresponding gland. The right supplies the right suprarenal and left supplies the left suprarenal. Next artery branches come. These are the renal arteries. Now, important part about the renal arteries is that they're quite large, relatively larger than your other branches of the aorta. These renal arteries are very important because the relations are important, right? So let's talk about the right renal artery first. The right renal artery passes behind the inferior vena cava. I want you to remember that very well. It lies behind the inferior vena cava and it then goes to the hilum of the right kidney and supplies the kidney. And on the left side, the left renal artery runs behind the left renal vein and the splenic vein. All right. I hope you can remember that. And then it goes to the uh, left kidney and supplies it. All right. So one more important thing that the renal arteries are responsible for giving the branches called the inferior suprarenal arteries and the ureteral arteries. Ureteral arteries, why? Because the ureter coming from the kidney, they supply that, right? Uh, let's go through this again. The inferior phrenic artery was giving the superior suprarenal artery middle suprarenal artery directly derived from the aorta and the inferior suprarenal artery was derived from the renal arteries of the aorta. I hope that makes sense. And finally, we have the gonadal branches, the gonadal arteries. Now, these arise just below the renal arteries and their course is that they go laterally downwards, obviously, because down is where your gonads are placed. So these two go downwards, right? Um, what do they cross when they're going downwards? The first important muscle that they're lying in front of is the psoas major. So the psoas major is basically the important muscle of your posterior abdominal wall. So these uh, two gonadal vessels are going to pass in front of the psoas major. Let's talk about the right side. The right side, the right gonadal artery is lying in front of the inferior vena cava. I hope you can see. And it's also in front of the right ureter and in front of another structure called the genitofemoral nerve. I hope you can remember that. All right. And similarly, on the left side, apart from the inferior vena cava, the similar relations that it, it is lying in front of your ureter, left ureter, and in front of your genitofemoral nerve of the left side the course going below the course changes in case of males and females in case if it's a testicular artery where do you think it'll go we'll talk we've talked about this it goes towards the spermatic cord within the spermatic cord it joins the spermatic cord and uh, is lying basically an anterior to the ductus deferens and then goes in uh, over the testes and it uh, divides into branches to supply the testes and epididymis right in case of ovarian arteries, these go below into the mesovarium and find their way towards the ovary after, you know, traversing the, the suspensory ligament and the broad ligament. Uh, and they enter the ovary and supply that. So that was all about the lateral branches. Overall, I want you to know that the description of the branches of the aorta is termed with either, either paired or unpaired and either visceral or parietal. In case of ventral branches, these are unpaired. That's for sure. And what do they supply? They supply the viscera. So they are the unpaired visceral branches. Let's talk about the lateral branches. Now, we all know this supplies the diaphragm. The rest of them are supplying your uh, important organs of the body. Running in pairs. I already talked about that. So these are the paired visceral arteries. I hope that makes sense. Inferior phrenic artery will join your lumbar arteries. These two are paired but parietal branches because they're supplying your abdominal wall. They're not supplying the visceras. So these are paired plus they are parietal. All right. So these two come in the same category. And finally, the median sacral artery is the unpaired, obviously, because it's in one in number. It's the unpaired parietal branch. Um, now let's talk about the lumbar arteries. What the lumbar arteries do is that uh, these are dorsal branches. They come in pairs of four, which means opposite all the vertebra 
two pairs are arising right it's here and two pairs arise here so that's how they uh, come and that's how they're four pairs right do they are going to run deep to the crura of the diaphragm deep to the swas major of the posterior abdominal wall and they will end up between the two muscles the transversus abdominis and the internal oblique so what do these branches supply first at the root of the transverse process of these vertebras uh, the lumbar arteries will give off a branch called the dorsal branch the dorsal branch will further give off a spinal branch the spinal branch will supply your vertebral canal all right all of these arteries are going to do the same thing they are going to give a dorsal branch a spinal branch a dorsal branch then a spinal branch and these supply the vertebral canal and finally these arteries will end up supplying the posterior abdominal walls muscles and the skin of the back then we have the median sacral artery this comes at directly at the bifurcation of the aorta at the level of l4 and this runs uh, posteriorly it is a single artery and it goes towards in to lie in front of the coccyx and eventually it just goes and supplies your rectum and joins other anastomoses like the iliolumbar and the lateral sacral arteries so these were all the branches of the aorta let's quickly discuss the common iliac arteries the right and the left these common iliac arteries arise at the level of l4 when the aorta terminates a little left of the median plane the left common iliac artery i want you to remember this important point it is crossed by the inferior mesenteric artery and after this the inferior mesenteric became the superior rectal artery i hope you remember and for the vein it's the opposite superior rectal vein becomes the inferior mesenteric vein i hope that makes sense uh, apart from that the common iliac arteries they go to to lie in front of the sacroiliac joints both sides and at that point these two arteries will uh, terminate to form the to become the external and internal iliacs all right so this is the right external iliac, right internal iliac, left external iliac, left internal iliac. That's how they terminate. Uh, so that was all about the branches of the aorta. Let's quickly discuss the clinical. In, for abdominal aorta, you can palpate the abdominal aorta in slim individuals if you if you apply pressure towards your umbilicus, right? Uh, that is one way you can actually feel the pulsation of the abdominal aorta. And another important clinical of the abdominal aorta is the aneurysm. At times, the aorta is dilated. Aneurysm means dilatation. So this is the normal aorta. This is in case of a dilatation. So this abdominal aortic aneurysm is a very dangerous situation because if there is any kind of exertion uh, done by the body, this can easily rupture and cause massive bleeding. It can lead to death if not fixed on the right time. If fixed in the right time, then the surgeons have to basically surgically apply mesh to it and, you know, stitch up the walls, right? And how will you detect an abdominal aortic aneurysm? Because you apply pressure of the anterior abdominal wall. You'll feel pulsations in those individuals that have this abdominal aortic aneurysm. You can even move this mass from side to side. You can feel its enlargement, right? And you can even do medical imaging to confirm your diagnosis. The cause of the aneurysm is usually because the arterial wall is weak. Another applied anatomy for the aorta is that uh, if there's any kind of bleeding in the pelvis or the lower limbs, uh, what you can do is apply pressure around your umbilicus area uh, to press your L4 vertebra and that can actually reduce bleeding. So that was all you needed to know about the abdominal aorta. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. I will meet you in the next video of the posterior abdominal wall. Thank you so much for watching.